Tony, how you been? Good, good, Harry. All's good. Not too bad. Do you get racing much, Tony, apart from when you're working uh, on the TV? A bit. I'm, I'm working uh, a little bit, yeah, because I'm still sort of helping JP with his horses in England and that, so I go I go and watch a few of them and sort of help look after them. So it keeps me keeps me busy and keeps me going to the races, and then I do 15 days on ITV, you know. I had my first day's racing last week. I went to Fontwell. I don't know what maybe I just suddenly I was sitting at home and I got up. I thought, what am I going to do? You didn't no. have any runners there? No. I just decided oh, yeah. to, to drive. I hadn't been racing for a couple of years and I've, I've been playing golf and I was a bit tired a couple of days. Of, I felt a bit weary walking around a couple of days. And I got up, I thought, what am I going to do today? And I thought, well. And I thought, I'm going to go. I jumped in my car on my own and just went off to Fontwell. <laughs> on was, your own? I love it, yeah. I just yeah. loved well, it, Tone. Well, Fontwell's a lovely little place, to be fair. Yeah. I ended up sitting down having a cup of tea with, with Paddy Brennan and a couple of the boys. They they saw me there and said, oh, come and have a cup. So while they were waiting between races, I sort of sat with it. I really enjoyed the day. That was great, you know, just to get back racing again, first time. You're, but, you've got so, a few more than you know. You've got a few more horses than you normally have. Uh, I know. I keep I keep collecting them, Tony. I think I'm, a, I'm, I'm an easy touch, you know what I mean? They <laughs> bring me up on... An you've expensive heard, hobby, Harry. You you know, you've heard the story, you know, got a lovely horse here for you, and then yeah. you buy it, and it's not so lovely, really. Yeah. Why hasn't he got why isn't Tony's great? I mean, you've got, you know, you you, you got a knighthood and absolutely deservedly so. And I, I can't believe that uh JP hasn't got a knighthood, is there? Uh I, I do you know I I suppose you see because I'm from the north of Ireland, so it's but I, I know from the south you can still get them, but yeah, I didn't know what the rules were. That's what I, I didn't want to say you know, something. Do you know what, Harry? He's so he's so unassuming, and that he he just doesn't he don't want any. No, do you know, no. He, he you know the amount of things that he does for charity. I know, people, like I the know. Injured, the things like the injured jockeys fund and racing welfare there during like you have no idea. Unbelievable! During lockdown, it would frighten you if I told you what he done during lockdown for, for jockeys fund and, and for racing welfare. You know, how could people he imagine? Believe it. But he no. doesn't want anyone to know. No. But I, I wondered that. I nearly a couple of times, you know, I thought, and I thought, well, maybe, uh, maybe you can't get it if you're from from the south. I don't know what the rules are. I you know. I, yeah, he, yeah, he don't, he, you know, he just doesn't. He just but no, he wouldn't push for it like for being, sure, would he? No, he just likes being low key, you know. Absolutely low key. I mean, I've been to functions like you have, a, you know, where you, you don't even know he's bid, he's bid for stuff, and he buys it. You know, he doesn't. He's not. He ain't one of them. Oh, over here, you know. Look at me. I'm buying. He just, you know, so so such a generous, incredible man. Really. How long have you worked with him, Tony? Uh, since two thousand and four. I actually rode my first winner for him in nineteen ninety six, and actually is the mother of synchronized the horse I won the Gold Cup on. So, um, you know, I, I know that you're asking. One of the things was about which my favorite horse synchronized was it for a lot of reasons, but. Um, yeah, he, he, and you know what? He just loves he loves sport, but he, he loves obviously he loves racing. You know what I mean, he loves he loves all sport. You know. Yeah. So who I mean, brought you yeah. over from Ireland, Tom? Where you you know you obviously ride in there, and was Piper your first job or? Um, I came to uh, um, I came to England in 1994. So I did, and um, told the late Toby Balding, uh, Claire's Terry uncle. Balding. Yeah, cool. New Toby, I mean, yes. Toby very kindly offered me a job, and um, I, I came to Toby's, and and I was very lucky. He got me an agent, Dave Roberts, who's the absolute, you know, the the be all and end all in terms of racing. You can't survive without him, and 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 it kind of just took off. Like I, I four and a half years in Jim Bulger's. I rode nine winners in four and a half years when I was trying to be a flat jockey, and when I came to England, I. Basically, I was lucky enough to be champion, a conditional champion apprentice. And then for the next sort of 20 years, I was lucky enough to be champion jockey. So a lot of thanks to, to Toby and Dave Roberts to get me started. And then I started riding for the first year I was champion jockey. I was a freelance jockey. I rode a lot for Philip Hobbs and Paul Nichols and for and for um, for Toby. And then then the following seven and a half years, I rode for Martin. Yeah. I mean, did, so, it, did it was an amazing time, wasn't it, Martin Pipe, really, when you look back on it, how them horses... Just seemed to get, you know, when you used to go off a lot of the time from the front and just run, it was like you were fitter than everybody. It just seemed incredible. I mean, did, did he have a real amazing training methods or something there? It just seemed. 
do you know what, Harry? He was just way ahead of his time. He yeah. just, you know, the greatest compliment that has been paid to Martin Pipe is that everyone copies him now. You know, every, everyone does what he did. And, you know, there was, it was very sad at the time. I remember talking to him about it, having the Cook report around and different things. And he, he just, he was very scientific. He was just, he, he treated racehorses like athletes, you know, and it was so much into their health and, and, uh, you know, and, and, and just, it was very, you know, very scientific, but very simple. And, and, um, and, and basically, I say the greatest compliment to him is that everyone does now what he did 30 years ago. So it's just ahead of his time. And um, uh, just, uh, look, he, he was a winner, you know. He, you know he, he just wanted to win and he was very good at it. This free trade investment app is terrific. If you've ever thought about investing, this is a great way to start and to grow some wealth over the long term. It's so simple, anybody can use it. Come here, I'll show you. You can buy and sell stocks plus ETFs. With none of your high commission fees you might get elsewhere. It's commission free and there's no hidden cost. Brilliant for beginners and experts. The free trade app is trusted by over 700,000 investors. Even better, if you register and fund your account via freetrade.io slash Harry, you get a free share worth between three and 200 pounds. Oh yeah, and don't forget that when investing, your capital is always at risk, meaning your investment can go up but they can also go down. Other charges may apply. What made you, was it weight, Tony, that made you change from a bit of flat jockey with Jim Bolger to come and ride over the sticks? Yeah, I broke my leg when I was about 18 in gyms and, and when I broke my leg, I had a really bad compound fracture on my tib and fib and had like five months in plaster and just I, I just got heavy, just started to grow. I, the funny thing is, Ari, I actually, I saw a picture of myself um, when I was 16, having my first ride in Phoenix Park in 1990. And I was exactly six stone three. Oh, my and I, God. And I'm I'm definitely twice that weight now. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Not a little, I've not a little bit more. So, yeah, so things Brilliant. have changed. Things have, I'm, I'm twice the person I was. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, and I bet it was hard work, though. You've come over, you know, let little lad come from come over to Ireland, I suppose, and the accommodation, everything must have been, uh, it must have been quite tough, Tony, eh? Yeah, yeah, it was. But I, I got, you know, very well looked after. And look, you know, as well as anyone, it's about hard, you know, it's about work, you know what I mean? And, and it's about, do you know, it, I think I had a little bit of talent. I'm not sure that I had loads, but I think I had a very good work. I had a very good work ethic, so I had, and I knew that, you know, I was never satisfied. I was never content. I always tried to get better. Um, you know, you're always, you know, I was always challenging myself, you know, and um, and that became, I suppose, the the when you're lucky enough to get in a, in a rhythm or getting in, in a in a, a way of winning, it, it it nearly becomes a need rather and a greed rather than. You know, you have to, it's not about wanting it to happen or, or hoping it'll happen. It's about making it happen. You know, and the only way you can make it happen is by is by working. And, and it's the one thing that I, I don't have any regrets in that I know that I worked. Yeah. You know, well, I say I worked. I never done, like you, Harry, I've never done days work in my life. No. Because I did, I know, <laughs> but, you know. Well, you're working a bit now, I suppose, trying to <laughs> make people like me sound interesting. But other than that. Uh, you know. Do you know the amazing thing, though? You know, as a betting man, you know, the days that I've had a bet and, and Tony's on one that I've bet and suddenly he loomed up and he's, you know, and then coming to the last and you think, I've done me money here because he looked and you realise Tony's on the other one. Or when you when you bet him and he was on your one, you always felt he's going to get, he'll win, he'll win, he'll win. It's amazing with, you know, it's just, it, that's how it worked out. I mean, whatever he rode, he seemed to be out of, get them home somehow. Back in the day, there was more punters, footballers were, you know, I grew up at West Ham. I went to West Ham at 15. And Friday night, the night before a game, West Ham, we had a dog track at West Ham. Uh, a great, get big galloping greyhound track. And Friday nights, a dozen of the players would be at the dogs the night before the match on the Saturday. It was the way it was. We'd go to play away from home, Tony, and we'd go up to Manchester and we'd get off the coach uh, off the train, on to, st in the hotel, bang, straight into a taxi to Salford Dogs on a Friday night. <laughs> uh, we'd order our food for like 10 o'clock, get back and have a steak or say 10 o'clock at night, but we'd be straight dog racing. There'd be a dozen, 14 of them, oh, we'd all go. 
there was punters, loads of loads of the footballers back in them days, Bawley. I mean, Laurie McMenemy always says that, you know, he said, uh, I used to come in in the mornings, he said, at uh, Southampton. I knew I'd see the binoculars hanging up, Shannon, Bawley, Keegan. They'd all have their binoculars hanging up on their hooks. And I used to think to myself, I I'd come in, I'd say, OK, give me a good hour and you you're off, OK? But you've got to put it all in for an hour. They'd come out and train like lunatics. They'd be off to Newbury or somewhere, you know. Yeah. But that was how it was back in them days. I think there was lots of lots of footballers with punters. They Do you think it. that all changed, Harry, because of the likes of social media and you think all these games and FIFA and all these things that they they play now? You know that was that was kind of your outlet, was it, to, to go rip and go to the dogs? Or whatever. Do you think? Do you think that's changed because? Their source of entertainment is different now, you know. Is and it, is the forum, Tony, I, I got, I was at Tottenham. So yeah. I, I got the coach. We had the, the first team coach. I organised everything. We had a box at, As at uh, Cheltenham. So we have all the food. We have a, we have a waiter on the, sh on the bus. We're going to, they, they get on. We've got all coffees and teas being served with biscuits. We've got the papers. We get to Cheltenham races. We go into this lovely box. Beautiful. It was like I'd put them in prison tone. They sat there, <laughs> I swear, Pavlichenko, like the Russian, and I've got you yeah, know, yeah. Croat. They, they're looking at me. We'd only been there half hour. What, what time what time we go home? What time we leave? When, when we when we leave here? I said, You you've got to walk round. This is an incredible hundred thousand pick. This is the greatest. Didn't go out the box, didn't want to go, didn't watch a race, had no interest in going to do anything. Just wanted to get out and get away from there. It was unbelievable. I couldn't. I thought that's the last time I do that. But um, back in the day, I would take you take a team. I was at West Ham. We were struggling, couldn't win a game, and I decided I'm going to take the lads out for a day. We went to Sandown Park for a jump meeting. We get there. I book an Italian restaurant on just around the corner from the. We had a great day. Great days racing. Have a drink and a bit of pasta after. We went on a run with 12 games to go and stayed up. And when we were desperately, and I always said it was nothing to do with, we just had a bit of team building, you know, everything's different. I was telling one of the guys, oh, we're doing this at Bournemouth Football Club. And I was just telling one of the guys, we, I, I was a manager here. We beat Man United in the FA Cup 2-0. We were a struggling third division team. And we draw Man United in the FA Cup, who we were cup holders. Ron Atkinson was a manager. And they had 11 internationals, Brian Robson, Lou Macari, it was that area, you know? Armand Whiteside. Yeah, and they came here to play us, yeah. and they're like 33 to 1 on, I suppose, you know, we're 100, we can't, we're, we can't, we're struggling in the third division. We was bottom half. Something happened on the day, and God knows how, and we battered them, beat them 2 0, and they never had, had a shot. And on the Monday, we come in, we're all over the papers every day, all the weekend, Sunday, everything's about Bournemouth pulling us off this cup upset. There was an old red red graph pitch out there, an old cinder pitch. And we occasionally, if, if it was un we'd go on there if it was unlocked. And Monday morning, the, the, my coach comes, he said, Harry, there's no the, the, the red graph pitch is unlocked. He said, We can I said, lovely, we're going to have a nice nine aside this morning. We're full of just beat Man United. We go on there. Go and start the game. We're having a great game. The old park keeper come round on his bike, put the padlock on, and locked us in. <laughs> right now we're Bournemouth. We're just what we put, put Bournemouth on the map, and he's ain't even told us. He's just put the padlock on, locked us in. He shouldn't be in there. We had to climb a twenty foot high <laughs> fence to get out. And I remember getting out, my leg over one side. I couldn't get over. Yeah, I took about bring you back down to earth. I mean, it was like different world nowadays. It's the facilities and everything is just crazy. Tony, great talking to you. Pleasure. Really Take lovely. Care. Really appreciate you doing it. Look forward to seeing Look you forward. soon, Tony.